Ain't no fetish like the one we got. Put the balls at your feet, gonna rip the shot. Oh, ah, ah, ah. Ooh. And we're back. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a damn minute. God damn, it's been a minute. But it's gonna be a footy fetish show for you, folks. <laughs> Who's with me? Ocho, you with me? I'm with you, brother. And yes. we're back. Welcome back, world. We got a little friend with us today, too. Oh, we do got a friend. This is a new guest, and I'm very excited to have this guest on. This guest and I met at a sandwich shop in Lafayette, and uh, he was actually my manager at the time. We had become great friends with, uh, with our interest and passion for soccer. Uh, without further ado, everybody welcome Travis Warren to the show. Travis, what's up? Hey, guys. Uh, pleasure. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. I've been, uh, been trying to get on it for a little while now. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, we're very excited. Travis has actually helped participate in some of the fantasy leagues we've done. Very excited to have him back in this upcoming one. For the 2021, 2021. 2021 Champions League. Travis, we always like to ask new guests, what got you into soccer? Can you oh, remember uh, that memory? I was going to say, um, my father did. He was kind of like adamant that I tried like all sports, soccer, baseball, uh, you know, football, basketball. And then I'd at least play like one season before I told him I didn't like it. But uh, once I had to play one season of soccer, I was hooked. I was in. Awesome. Awesome. And hell yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of people don't know this about you, but you were a goalkeeper, right? That's correct. Yes. So, what got you into goalkeeping? What um, what was something uh, that the, the first game I played goalkeeper? I was a field player until we about U eleven, U ten. We just moved to the bigger fields and the bigger goals, and our goalkeeper got hurt, and uh, coach put me in. And uh, man, I hated every minute of it. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was crying at halftime. I wanted out of the goal. We lost. We lost seven to five. <laughs> uh, that's an intense game. I gave him stuck some with it, man. Man, I mean, the other keeper let in five. I mean, that's <laughs> I a plus. Three, I think it was three to one, and we lost seven to five. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, down, but they weren't. That's, they, that was the first, thing, and then they stuck with me after that. And uh, I just got used to it. And uh, probably another, there's another position I'd rather play, to be honest. Fucking right. All right, so I got two more questions for you. First, who is a goalkeeper that – I guess this is a two-part question. Who is your favorite goalkeeper? And as the second question, what goalkeeper do you feel like you play the most like? Ooh, let's see. When I was growing up, it had to be uh, – I mean, it had to be David Seaman probably for Arsenal was probably my, Damn, my favorite. nice. But, I mean, he also had the, the, the you know, the Peter Smigels and, and uh, you know, uh, Fabian Borthez was actually one of my favorites because I was I – was, uh, we were both under – Six feet tall, you know, he's 5'11", I'm 5'11", so, uh, say one I most play like, though, man, I'd like to think, sorry to compare myself to professional, though, but I'd like to think, <laughs> like, 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 kind of like Edwin Van der Sar, that's, that's who I kind of, like, base my game on, I tried to be, like, just have that big, you know, wingspan presence when he comes out, he'd be low, like, hands wide, and uh, just more of a positional player, more than a flair of, like, a, a diving uh, acrobatic player you know he made like he makes complex saves look simple and i always tried to model my game after that being in the right place at the right time rather than having to react with some crazy acrobatic stunt you know i like that shout out a lot that's a gentleman we have not yet mentioned on this show that's and that's a, pathetic we haven't that's very true he's a legend absolutely he's a fucking legend for sure all right Hell last yeah. question for you travis yes, sir. who's your favorite team and why favorite team would be uh arsenal uh it goes back to uh my dad had to take over like the coaching job. Our head coach moved away when I was like U10 and, or no, U8, I believe. And uh, he knew absolutely nothing about soccer, having not played it. And he had one of those old satellite dishes, like in the backyard. It looked like a trampoline size, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. The English broadcast. And I guess he was just going to pick a team to watch. And uh, I guess, I guess to be honest, probably Arsenal just had the coolest name. Everyone else was like Man City or Liverpool, like where they're from. And it was just, Arsenal, you know, that was it. There was a team name, and that was just a team. I guess he picked to kind of watch every Saturday, try to learn the game. 
So I remember we'd go from cartoons to the EPL, and my dad would be watching, <laughs> kind of taking notes, like old school style, you know, trying to figure out what the hell was going on in, in, with the game. And uh, we just kind of started watching Arsenal together and been a fan ever since then. I guess it was 93, 94, something like Damn. that. Damn. Damn. Wow. That's impressive. It's a ways so you, back. You got to see some great stuff with Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, pretty much. And you got to see some heartbreak moments, but yeah, some good stuff too. <laughs> you got to mention heartbreak too. <laughs> uh, that Champions League final, man. That was, uh, this, oh, it broke my heart. Oh, man. That's tough. Man. Definitely one of the coolest names. I agree with you there. We yeah. are an arsenal of motherfuckers. The coming fucking straight gunners, you. man. The gunners. Right? God, it's a yeah, great name. We're an arsenal. We're an army. Yeah, man. We're coming. <laughs> Good stuff. Beautiful. Well, let's jump into some news. Let's jump into some news, baby. First of all, folks, we are going to jump into a few things that happened over the weekend, happened over the past week now that we got soccer almost every single day. Yo, it's I guess it's kind of like a blessing in itself now that we don't have, you know, the Euros going on. We we still do have soccer every day. Yeah, we do. We uh, do. So I guess I can't complain there, mm-hmm. but... Anyway, I'd still rather my Euros anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll stop bitching <laughs> about that. So, anyways... What do we have to do first, Hugh? We have, we have some business to take care of. We got some business to take something care of. Something is back. Oh. Something is back. The final piece, bro. It's back. The it's Champions. back. Champions League is back. Champions League is back, baby. You know what that means? The whack is back. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have some teams for me to whack again. Oh, the whack The Godfather is coming to whack some people away. <laughs> but how's that going to work? I don't know. It's gonna be a, the, the rules are gonna be a little bit different this time. Um, they are gonna complete those remaining round of sixteen second leg games, folks. Uh, we got some good ones. There's yes. So off the top of my head, Man City, uh, Real Madrid, Man City, Real Madrid, uh, Chelsea, and Bayern. I think that one's already done. Yeah. But um, well, uh, Juve, Lyon. Oh, that could go any direction right now. Yes, that wide could go open. Any direction. Uh, we're missing one. What's the last one? There's a fourth one in there. Mm, mm, yeah. Bo- 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 top of my head, I can't remember. Bo- 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 Juve, Man City, Real, Leon, Leon. Bayern, Chelsea. Oh, I have, I have. Oh, yeah. oh, oh Napoli, yes, Barcelona. Thank you, Napoli, Boom. Barcelona. God, those are great Boom. games. <laughs> Woo! Which that one can go either way too. That yeah. one's tied at one. That's one one. Boom. That's a one one game. That's gonna be a sexy one. So but, what uh, happens after the round of sixteen, booty? Glad you asked. I got your answers. From August 12th to 15th, so right after the 7th and the 8th, August 8th. That's when they start? August 7th and yeah, 8th? Yes. So okay. that's going to be that's gonna be the remaining round of 16 second league fixtures. That's going to take place in, in Neon, uh, Switzerland. Hmm. Now, All right. the 12th to the 15th, only a few days later, we're going to pick straight up the quarterfinals. The quarterfinals and the semifinals are going to be a single leg elimination that will take place in Lisbon. Your semifinals will be August 18th and 19th, with the final being August 23rd. Wow. That's crazy. Rapid, rapid fire. That's fucking rapid that fire, man. Boom, boom, boom. Falcon fast, man. We're going to be whacking Falcons <laughs> daily. Come and get them. Good to see you again, Godfather. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Okay, with that big news, let's uh, let's let's jump into some some soccer because yes. I mean yeah. we've had games every day. It's like it's a blessing, but as well as like I'm missing so much because I just can't keep up with it daily. And we'll be honest with you, folks, we completely missed uh, we missed a good chunk this we weekend because there has been so much. There's been a lot, but we're gonna keep you up to date as much as possible since um, we last talked. Travis, I gotta ask you, man. Yes, sir. What are what are, what's your thoughts on this uh, Champions League? Who do you think is a favorite? Could you give us a top four? Give us some of your uh, your perspective here. Uh, I mean, I would have to say, I mean, the top four, it rarely seems to change a lot sometimes. You know, you always have the Bayern's going to be in there. Uh, you have you know, the, 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 the La Liga teams, Madrid and, and, and Barcelona. But, I mean, I like to always like going for the underdogs and the, you know, the, the less favored teams as well. But, I mean, I, I can't call it either. Plus, going to a single leg uh, semifinal and and that you know, on neutral ground and being such rapid fire succession, man, I I'm not too sure. I think it's, I think it's going to be interesting, but I, I can't call it. <laughs> I don't think you can. I think you're spot on there. Without the fans, uh, it's going to be really interesting. I mean, we just saw Liverpool get knocked out by Atletico Madrid. Yeah, I mean, that, that's Liverpool's wild. Solid, What's that? Atletico is solid though. It's not like they're a slouch or that much of an underdog. 
That's true. That's true. They always they're just kind of in the shadows of Barcelona Real, which is unfortunate, yeah. but that's a solid squad, you know. That's a very solid squad and they proved it that night. But uh, I'm with you, man. Is is without fans, is it more likely that the team on paper will win? You know, the best team on paper? Is that do you think that's the route that'll that'll happen? I, I I'm not sure cuz I, I don't think it's ever really been done unless you're watching the like they've seen like the Champions League with a the Russian team is not their fans aren't allowed in for some crazy stuff they pulled or something. But that's about the only time I can remember ever watching a game where there weren't any fans in the club in the crowd. And I think it definitely makes a difference. Uh, but I would have to say it, it, you're right though. It would make sense that the, the team better on paper is going to have the better shot to win because those underdogs aren't going to have the emotions of the crowd and, and everybody behind them, you know, getting them pumped up and, and, and pushing forward you know, to do something that everyone told them they can't do. Couldn't be done. That's right. That's right. I got one more thing. Have you heard of the team Atalanta? Have you been following them in Champions League? Yes, I, I've heard of them. Uh, I, and until this Champions League, though, not so much. <laughs> but it's crazy, yeah. right? This yeah. is their first ever Champions League, and they're already on to the quarterfinals. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. They're probably playing the best soccer <laughs> right now, as that's far as attacking about, wise. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's about. And actually, we're going to get into that to the Atalanta today. They had a great game today. Great game today. Okay, so with that, I'm glad you, uh, you you dropped those bombs for us. I, I really like that that perspective. I think you're spot on. It's the 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 lack of fans is really going to be a like a kind of a random variable as far as the outcome of these games. I tell I've, been, I've said this twice now on the podcast. These are the games you might want to bet on because it's more likely than not going to go into the favor of the team on paper. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I think you're right. I, I got to agree with Travis too. I think Bayern being one of those big teams, Man City being another one. The teams that are just dominating people, um, per you know, per usual, mm. said you know, take away the whole underdog aspect of it. I think the only underdog that really does have a shot is Atlanta. But what would they do against a team like Bayern? I think that'd be really fun to see. I I hope to see it. Yeah, I would love uh, to see that. Speaking of them, cool. they wrapped up their own yeah. little Bundesliga title, the eighth straight for them uh, this past week. Uh, back on June sixteenth, they. Wrapped up that eighth straight with a one nothing victory against Werder Bremen. Again, just dominating, just being really, you know, pressing forward, looking great. You got Alfonso Davies running that whole wing. That whole left side is is it's all it's Alfonso Island. It's the whole <laughs> thing. That's all his. That's meet all me. his. Yeah, <laughs> meet me. Road Roadrunner. Road runner, I think hit what did what they say? He hit like twenty five miles an hour or it's something insane. that game. <laughs> <It's insane. laughs> It's Dude is a insane. car. He's a car. He's a school zone. You know what's crazy? When you think about Bayern, it just happened to fall out that they needed a center back. David Alaba had to pinch into the center back. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? We just signed this guy. Let's see what he's got. And it's like, oh, this dude's a no, starter. Worked. This worked. dude's a fucking starter. He's Canadian. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Can Canadians play soccer? Do they even know what it is? I don't even know. <laughs> Where's the puck? Yeah. 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 What is this round thing about? <laughs> What you said there, Travis? As a, who was who was a, a Champions League Canadian soccer player before this? I, I'm trying to think of one. Justin Hoyt comes to mind. I only know one Canadian player. I think. Damn, yeah, I shit, couldn't I have couldn't even announce one. that, dude. <laughs> Damn, another great shout out on the show. Yeah, Hot shit. take. Hot take. Damn. I tell you what. Speaking of Bayern, they are going to finish the season very uh, a lot sooner than all the other leagues. Yep. Which might favor them for Champions League. Enough rest. Uh, they're going to have – it's that debate of rest or rust. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. after 10 games, you've shaken off the rust, and now you're just going to enjoy the rest here. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad you said them first, Travis. That was the first team you said. You know, like, oh, Bayern. It was like, yeah, yeah. Bayern are looking like strong favorites in this championship. Yeah. Definitely. Looking at, I watched, the, watched the, one of the Bundesliga games that they, they just destroyed. I think it was Berlin, like five or six nothing. It just They look like a well-oiled machine, as most of the German champions do, you know, so – that are going to be harder. Yeah. 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 So how does the rest of the league shake out, Booty? Uh, you're looking at Bayern with 79 points, so they have it wrapped up. It's all theirs. They're taking it home with them. Uh, no receipt necessary. They're going <laughs> to take that run with it. So uh, Dortmund's behind them with 69 points. you got RB Leipzig with 63. That was an important game they had this past weekend. Yes, very much so. Um, really created that gap between the two of them. Yes. And as you've seen, as you know, just said, I mean, a whole 10 points, obviously. And RB Leipzig, that's the gap you're speaking yeah, of. Yeah, the 69 to 63. Yeah. They played this weekend. Um, 
So that's going to be very important. These next few that we're mentioning, obviously Dortmund, RB Leipzig, Machin Gladbach is right behind them with 62. Um, and Leverkusen with 60. <clears throat> it's going to be really fun to see four. Yeah. how that shapes up for Champions League, those those top four spots. Um, after that, you got Wolfsburg way behind them with 49. Because Wolfsburg's been up and down. Yeah. Um, so they could maybe, maybe make a run at it. I don't see it. I think Leverkusen's a better team there from what we've seen. Um, Hoffenheim, 49 behind Wolfsburg. Freiburg, 45. Frankfurt, 42. Hertha Berlin rounded out that top 10 with 41. Uh, it's going to be a more interesting race, I think, to see those Europa spots. Um, but I think keep an eye on that Leverkusen, Machin Gladbach, uh, that race for, for fourth place should be fun. And, you know, Leipzig might slip a little bit. What are they going to look like without Timo? Life after Timo, we'll see. Uh, I'll tell you what, for me, I got a hot take here. I think Hertha Berlin will somehow squeak away into the Euros. Do a little something. The, the Europa League. Yeah. They have been on great form lately. Um, and they're only eight points behind Wolfsburg. You know, I think Wolfsburg is a sixth place spot. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's just a hot take. You know, I love taking hot takes. Atalanta are in the fucking round of 16. Yeah. And I just Ooh. rode that ship all the way yeah. to it to the end. Travis, I don't know if you knew this. He's been captaining the ship. I've been, <laughs> I've been <laughs> predicting Atalanta will advance into the knockout stages of Champions League since the beginning, and got right. made fun of every that- episode <laughs> until they started winning. Pretty they close. lost <laughs> their first three games, and then they it went tie, win, win, to to put themselves in second place in advance. And so, no one's been in quite of a hole. Yeah. In, Champions League history. Ever. Has, ever. It, no team that, has ever yeah. lost the first three games and then advanced to the knockouts. Stage. Yeah. Right, well, so I'm very proud about that guess there. 2020 is all about breaking records. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heard that, man. Heard that. Man. Well, Bundesliga is pretty much wrapped up except for the top four. I think we should just move on here. Let's let's move on to La Liga. We're moving the leagues that and aren't wrapped up. Let's do it. This is, this is going to be a fun one all the way to the end. I you think know, so, we, too. We had talked about it last week. And it's it's Real Madrid Barcelona. They're they're neck and neck right here. Yeah. Uh, and Sevilla, I got to pat myself on the back here. I predicted Sevilla could give Barcelona some trouble. He did they tied Barcelona? Barcelona lost two points. Real won their game plus three. They are now tied sixty eight to sixty eight with Real Madrid ahead. This is gonna be a fun. Be fun. This is gonna be a fun finish right here. It's gonna be very gonna be fun. A lot of fun. Uh, looking at. Third place, Atletico Madrid at 55. Sevilla in fourth with 53. Getafe in fifth with 49. Villarreal in, f- in sixth with 48. Real Sociedad in seventh with 47. Valencia in eighth with 46. Granada in ninth with 43. Atletico Bilbao in tenth with 42. Again, these Europa spots, I, I didn't realize how valuable they were, uh, but... These these last ten teams all have a valid shot of getting into that sixth spot. Yep. Um, and even some of these fifth, sixth, and seventh place teams could potentially catch these third and fourth place teams. I don't think Atletico Madrid will slip, but Sevilla. Um, not to not to like down them after I put them on a pedestal, but they're not the strongest team. Here. I'd like to see what the rest of their uh, their schedule yeah. looks like for the rest of That's the year. That's actually a good point. Uh, Atletico, something to point out, they were in six the last time we spoke, last time we were on this podcast. No shit. So they've moved up three spots. They're now in Champions League as of right now, and they're still in Champions League, of course, moving on to those quarterfinals. I think that's uh, something interesting to point out. Something really, really fun, and everybody in the world that listens to us, and Hugh's going to laugh too. Uh, I really want to see uh, Real do this. I hate Real like with a passion because they always just – they always just they're the ones that make me cry. They put Juve out every, all the time. The Champions League. League. They're 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 the evil f- Falkers. Uh <laughs> to me. Like every time I close my eyes, I'm getting beat by Real. But I tell you what, <laughs> see! it's been really fun. <laughs> see And we oh, even okay. got it, you know, we even stole Wonder yeah, Boy from them and they're still the just made y'all lose. And they're still there just staring at me in Champions League. Um <laughs> I you know, it, it's really fun though to see you know, if you go back and look, Zidane didn't really have a lot of faith in those youngsters. He's really been putting faith in the youngsters mm-hmm, lately. Mm-hmm. Rodrigo, Vinicius. Vinicius has now, what, scored twice in two games? Um, yeah. Really fun to see. So, um, Also, Valverde. I think Valverde is another young player. Yes. Uh, I think his name is 
uh, Mendy. Is it Furland Mendy or Benjamin? I think it's Furland Mendy. Yes, Ben Mendy's with City. With the City, yeah. So yeah. Mendy, another young player. Yep. Um, can't forget Hakimi's coming back. You, yep. you know Zidane's going to be thrilled to have him on the right flank or left flank. I think he can play either, which is really great. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you know I'm a Real Madrid fan, but I love a tight finish. You know, yeah, this would be fun. Uh, I don't like to see a blowout too much. Like, that gets boring after a while. You're like, oh, okay, fine, yeah, you're going to win. Yeah. It's like, Barca's no, going to win again. You don't know who's going <laughs> to win here. You don't know. but you, you really don't. And another thing to point out, Real Madrid has the tiebreaker right now. We say, right. We're we saying That's that right. they are in first. They are in first technically due to a tiebreaker. They have 68 points as well as Barca. If they tie in points, they win on the tiebreak. <laughs> yeah. Is, it, is, so. it, is the first tiebreaker there? Because I'm looking at that. It seems like they have the least amount of losses, but Barcelona beats them in every other category. I think it goes head to head, in which oh, head to head. Okay, yeah, I think it's head to head, and not actually. I think they both have won one, but then it goes to maybe a goal differential in head to head. Don't quote me on this, but that's how I would do it if I'm Barcelona looking has at a better goal differential, more goals scored, more wins, more goals. Yeah, they have, Real Madrid has a, a lower amount of losses and a lower, lower amount of goals conceded. Ah. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. I was just oh, looking that's at right. That. I know. Yeah, you're right. Goal differential definitely plays a part. Um, so I'm looking here on December of 2019, they tied 0 0. And then in March of 2020, Real Madrid won. So I think oh, yeah. they automatically get that tie break through just because Ooh. of that 1 1 uh, tie win. Damn, that was right before the break, too. Yeah, that was like right before the break. Wow. That was exciting. Vinicius uh, busted through the cherry and popped that first goal in. Despite everybody at halftime talking trash, I'll never forget that. Vinicius doesn't, he, he doesn't have the final like ball. He doesn't have the final ball. He can't do it. He can't do it. Zidane needs to take him out. And I'm like, don't take that don't man take out. Don't take him out. He has been getting in behind the defense all game long. It's eventually going to happen. I think sure enough, lot. boom. Man, if the purple jersey ever comes back around, Oof. I'll it, do it. Put it in the jersey order. I'll do it. It's going to burn my skin. Order. <laughs> I'll do a Vinicius. I love that guy. Oh, man, that's awesome. I'm actually going to get the uh, Real Madrid third kit. I don't know if you've seen oh. that. It's a teal kit. Oh, teal? Have you seen that one, Travis? Oh, which team? The uh, Real Madrid third kit. Uh, I, th- I think oh. I've seen the picture of it. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking it up now. Like I'm, getting, I'm getting the uh, Tony Cruz. Tony Cruz third kit. You Real Madrid fan? You? I am. I am. It, I mean, it was all because of Ronaldo. You know, Ronaldo got there, and I was like, I just want to watch Ronaldo play. And then Zidane got there very soon after. Came back. Uh, maybe not soon, but like, you know, around 2013, 2014. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 15, 14, 15 Ancelotti season. Ancelotti right before him? It was, no, it was, um, fuck, oh, it was uh, R- Rafa, Rafael Benitez. And he got fucking smacked in an El Clasico. And nope. I, I remember immediately going on Facebook and being like, bring in Zidane. Because like Zidane was on. five nothing. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, like I remember fucking that. walloping. I yeah, remember it was that. bad. And it was like, how do you lose that badly when you have such a great team? Yeah, that's that shouldn't happen. He gets fired. Zidane comes in, wins Champions League that year. Coming in <laughs> in the halfway point, And then proceeds to do it two more times right after. Only proves you're fucking up so, some kind of co- some kind of coaching level there. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, like that for me was like I I lost a lot of respect for Rafa Benitez despite Shit. his history. You know he's a great coach, but that for me it was like, dude, you got a team like that and you can't you can't, can't make it a one zero loss. It's got to be like a fucking five nothing slap in the face. You know, come on, man. I remember seeing that being really happy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. I remember a lot of people are like, hey man, how you feeling? I'm like, good. Hey dog, don't talk to me right now, dog. Don't fucking talk to me. <laughs> No, but this is going to be interesting. Uh, I wish I could watch more La Liga games. They are playing daily now. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Uh, Real Madrid played today, and they won 2 0, I believe. And, two, and two that being said, what would you say? They won 2 nothing against uh, Mallorca. There you go. 2 nothing. Vinicius goal, Sergio Ramos goal. Sergio Ramos got a goal. Mm-hmm. So. Sergio is really coming into form as a. As a leader, as a team. as a position, we don't we don't have a name for yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's a hybrid position. He's a yeah. He's a flex in there. In there, right, Travis? He's a flex. Yeah, yeah. He's a flex. <laughs> Did you put him at striker? Whatever you need for me. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hell yeah. That's cool. Well, so that that being said, with games being every day, what we got up next for the big dongs, the big boys, Barca. 
They had Celta Vigo on June 27th. So that is Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, because we just said 26 is Friday. That's yeah. right. 27 okay. Saturday. So Saturday. And then we have Atletico on Saturday as well versus Alavis. And then we have Real Madrid against Espanol. And that's going to be Sunday. On Sunday, yeah. 28th. So again, that's where we're going to see who's going to move where. You know, it's mm-hmm. going to be fun. Oh yeah! Someone has Real Madrid has basically got this in the bag. As long as they don't just slip keep points, winning just keep winning. They look like they're on form. Benzema is hot. Uh, and you Barcelona know what, doesn't look like you know what's on form, you know so. what's interesting. Barcelona, I feel like fucked themselves immediately before they started playing when they put their whole team up for sale, except with the exception of three players. Yeah, that for me just sends shockwaves through your locker room. You know, like. Hey, uh, we're not going to tell you directly, but you're going to find out in the media that everyone is for sale except for Messi, uh, De Jong, and Ter Stegen. I mean, could you imagine being a player like, well, I guess you really don't value me. I have great motivation to play for you now. And think about the other underlying message there is, and we talked about it, in, you know, we have big group texts. We always text, text each other, folks. Why would they be selling everybody? Because they're trying to buy. Yes. So we're trying to tell you, like, you won't be here. Yeah. We want other people. To come in, fill your roles, man. Not to fill your roles, fill your holes. <laughs> I mean, that's there's tons of holes to be filled there. Tons of holes to be filled. I mean, y'all, y'all, the motherfuckers that went and spent a hundred million on Griezmann, and you don't even play him half the time because you just, can't even figure out a place to put him. Mutually, it was just a bad decision. Yeah, it was just a bad decision. He shouldn't went there. He they over stay right they right. overpaid for him. Number one, number two, he should have known he doesn't fit in that play style, that squad. He saw the bright lights. He saw the bright oh. lights. Uh, and I think that's kind of get with with Barcelona too. It's gonna to be all. It's gonna be that positive. It's not gonna be the positive reinforcement. It's gonna be the play better or you're off the team because they have they have a whole every player in the world they can go get and money's not an option. Yes. So I think that's, that's right. about the best yep. you're gonna get from the administration. Yep, that's right. Meanwhile, Real Madrid, nah, they're yeah. keeping it very tight to the chest. We like our team. We've got a lot of young players that are uh, gonna be there for the future. I don't see them slipping at all, and I see them just running away, running away with La Liga. You said it best uh, last time we were hanging out. They're, they're the Yankees. You know, Real Madrid? Uh, yeah. Barca, Barca. Oh, Barcelona? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. they just spend, spend, spend. You know, it just, you know, sometimes you don't get it. I will say the Suarez move, fantastic. De yeah. Jong, fantastic. Our tour is like, yeah, okay, good. Just haven't seen enough of him. Yeah, and, and now, and now, all of fault. a sudden, we, you know, we've got a transfer rumor. We're going to talk about later with our tour, but I mean, you're doing this during the middle of the season. Yeah, like you're trying to. Are you you're still in Champions League. It makes you wonder: Do they care about winning the league, or do you think they were just so overly confident that they're like, "Oh, we've got this, no problem." It's I like, think they're yeah. Man. I think they're overly confident in that, and they're just looking for Champions League titles. Which you're still in this for Champions League, and if you're we, scared of Napoli. Yeah, Napoli. I mean, Napoli beat Liverpool. Yeah, we we got to remember that twice. Not to mention they just won Copa Italia. Yeah, they're in great form. They just knocked out Juventus. We went to a PK shootout, but yep. they held in there. Uh, you know they they knocked out Inter, who is a fantastic team right now. They are just rolling through. Barca scared. Um, I they're think Barcelona is scared. I think their locker room scared. I think the management scared. Yeah, I think we're gonna see them crumble this year. Um, it's gonna be interesting. La Liga, La Liga, ladies and gentlemen, be on, be on the ready for that. That'll that'll be where we we'll see how much of a leader Messi is. Speaking, ooh, Just throwing that out there. hot fucking. Yeah, that's take. a hot take. <laughs> hot fucking. I've been take. waiting for it. Yeah, it's true, man. I mean, he's he's got the bankroll to surround him with with help, but uh, you got all the help in the world. You do, you just, you here we are. Of, do you guys really think it's a a roster issue though with Barcelona, or, or do you guys think that at that level it is more of what a coach can do with the with the players he's got? Because I mean, everybody on Barcelona team is no doubt. Talented, the world class. Yeah, world class. Mm. That's right, world class. Uh, I think it's a combination of both, and I'm glad you brought up the coaching point. Uh, I was recently talking to a friend, and he was he was giving me the counter argument that it shouldn't matter what coach you have. You're an, you're an elite player. Um, you know you should be able to play with any coach you have. To where I'm like, man, the coach makes a Huge fucking difference. I mean, I like I just said, I have to agree with you. With, yeah, the, I think at that yeah, level, the coach makes more difference than when he doesn't absolutely. have players. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I I couldn't agree more with you. I mean, I just brought up a great example: Rafa Benitez Zidane, same yeah. season, yeah. losing in El Clasico three or four zero, 
finishing the season with a new coach, winning Champions League. If that exactly. doesn't speak to to you and I's uh, side of the argument, I don't know what else you can do. So I think that's a good point. I think not only is it the coach, but it's also the locker room. And when I say yeah. the locker room, I, I speak about that, hey, everybody's for sale. So you've yeah. got two really big factors that when you put them together, you're just asking for an implosion here. Yeah, yeah. morale is yeah. yeah. shit at this point. Yeah. Morale is shit. I agree with you 100% too. I mean, you need to – you need to have the coach to figure out where everybody goes. That's right. I mean, and how they click, how they react with each other, mm-hmm. I think is is a big point. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go back to the Yankees for a minute. In 2004, um, they bought a guy named Alex Rodriguez. Um, Alex Rodriguez plays shortstop. So does Derek Jeter. Mm. So they said, eh, we'll just put you at third base. Call what they're doing with Griezmann. When have you ever seen Griezmann play a left wing <sighs> in his life? And this year, they're just like, eh. Eh, you can do it. It's fine. <laughs> Yankees didn't win that year, by the way. Oh, <laughs> no, so I mean, that that was a great point, Travis. I, I definitely think we gotta we gotta mention the coach here. Who I think they also if, correct me if I'm wrong. They switched mid season. Yes, that was another mid season switch for yep. a coach. Hundred thousand dollar, hundred million dollar buy. The coach? No, hundred million dollar buy and oh. he got fired before Christmas. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, come on, man. Like, when does that happen? At Barcelona, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at Barcelona, yeah, Barcelona have it, will yeah, find a is... way. <laughs> My goodness! So we spoke about Napoli winning Copa Italia. Let's let's jump into some Serie A, booty. Yes, Copa Italia, ladies and gentlemen, belongs to Napoli. Uh, last time we spoke, we were still in the semis, where we were talking about how Napoli was going to go up against Inter. They ended up defeating them on a two to one aggregate. Uh, Juve and AC were on the other side. Um, Juve ends up beating Milan in the worst game ever. By the skin of their teeth, bro. Uh, worst game ever. <laughs> Damn, we were so close. <laughs> A 10-man Milan still, and Juve still couldn't score. We won't get me into that. First time. Oh, man. I think it was the first time AC Milan has held Juve scoreless in, in like forever. Uh, Allianz Stadium. Yes, it was a, it was, First time ever. There, it was a really bang bang situation where Ronaldo misses a PK, and with it, this is like a whole thirty second spiel. He it misses was, the it PK. Was it was blocked. It was it was some yes, it was somewhat blocked. Fingertips, a full fingertips, hits the post, knocks out, and then we got Rebic on the other end. All of a sudden, just <laughs> I'm talking like kung fu fighting, oh my God. and straight <laughs> chest somebody gets the red card. Might have been Danilo. Yeah, it was one of those ones I rewatched. I watched the replay a few times, and I was like. Yeah, you need to go sit down, buddy. Um, Not only did that that cost us the game, I believe that that red card cost the current coach his job. Mm. Because right now, Milan are sitting in seventh place. So the focus then became, let's at least win one title with Copa America. Um, it, not Copa, Copa Italia. Copa Italia. If, if that coach would have won Copa Italia, I think he would have stayed there next year. Uh, but it's like you, you're tying the guy's hand behind his back when you get a red card in the what was it, like 20th minute. Yeah. Uh, so I, I felt. Yeah. I mean, in Rebic apologized and everyone um, accepted his apology. The team actually didn't find him, hmm. which was really interesting. That's nice of him. Uh, I think they appreciated his apology, and it must have been heartfelt. But that red card for me not only cost the the win, but also that coach's job. So I, I didn't see it. how egregious was the red card. What did he, what did he do? Oh. Obvious, yeah. It was, obvious. It was, it was bad. It was like um, I'm trying to think of a karate movie that had a kick <laughs> this high. I mean, like it was into the chest, like literally, like Air both feet out. off the ground. Uh, we'll have to just post the photo. I think it was Benton Core that he. No, no, it was like Danilo. It was or, Danilo. It was Danilo. Uh, I think it was Danilo. Yeah, and Danilo was down for a minute, and I was See, like, "Yeah, I don't blame you." It was. <laughs> it was one of those balls where like he's running, okay, and he's looking back. And then on and the, the other ball side, ball gets mm. put up over him from behind him. Yeah. So he's lo- looking over his shoulder and he's tracking it as it's coming over his shoulder. It's right in line where he can hit it with his foot. And right as it crosses over him, he like yeah. puts his foot up, and it's probably just enough time that he can peripherally see Danilo. And it's like, yeah. it's too late. I've committed at this point. I need to protect myself. And Danilo's chest was already there. And he just extended his foot fully, and just like it was like uh, that World Cup, Spain and Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't oh. know how that wasn't red card. Very much like that, yep. except actually it was a red card. Yeah, they 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 varred it, and it was like, guys, come on, like, let's yes. get the game going. This is a red card. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what are we talking about? Just, like, on. not many people argued against it. No. Like, was just like, all right. Yeah, Rebic just kind of put his head down and started walking off, off the field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's like, it was, fuck. 
It was bad. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. I can talk to the rep. A, I gotta make yeah. a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Juve ends up winning that one on uh, aggregate on away goals. That's right. And then the final was even more boring, if you could even imagine. Yeah, man. Shit. Uh, Napoli ends up winning on penalties versus Juve in a nil-nil draw. Who didn't get oh, to take one? Man. Oh, yeah. It's really interesting. Uh, so, Ronaldo didn't take one. You know, like the guy who probably should be first taking a penalty. The first two players for Juve walk up and miss. I believe it was Dybala and... Ronaldo was on the list to shoot, though, huh? Damn, who was the second shooter? I can't remember who the second shooter was. but Forgettable. That's yeah. all I got to say. Yeah, but there's there's the ball uh, missing in a big moment yet again. Just I, I go on rants about that all the time, Travis. It's just I, 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 I need him to do something in a big game for me. When, when he does all these things leading up to it, he just has a great Champions League, and then we get to the final, or we get to Copa final, and it's nothing. Just nothing. Um, for me, as a goalkeeper, I always shot in our team's PK shootout. So it was always either like first or fifth. I've done it like seven different PK shootouts, but I always just found them easy. I, I never missed one. And I'm not trying to say I make it on that stage, but but it just as a goalkeeper, it just the pressure is just different, I imagine. I, I don't know. It's just, just a tap yeah, but also, But also, I got to bring this up. There's no fans. Yeah. It's quiet. It's that's like a brutal. practice. That's, that's yeah. playing to the shooter's advantage. Yeah, exactly. That's where I'm like, what do you, how do you miss? Yeah. You got you got all the fucking silence you need. Get get hey, get your mental right, you know? Man. It's not what they block or did they miss post or miss the goal? Oof. I feel like Dabala yeah. just fucking Dabala is No, he he got blocked. He got blocked. He got blocked. That's right. The yeah. goalkeeper guessed. And I think the next guy, whoever it was, just Ooh, this is actually a great question for a blasted. goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. When yes. a player steps up, if he's a left footed player. For you, what is the direction that more than likely, more likely than not, he will go? I have to say, left foot going to come across his body, go to my left. Boom! Right, you would have blocked Dybala's shot. Congratulations. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and you know what? It wasn't even like tight to the edge. It was like a mid-level left foot shot. Like the goal. Like I remember watching the goalkeeper didn't really have to try that hard to block it. Uh, I kind of want to pull these high lefts up as we're talking. it they also, lost so quickly in the PK shootout. Ronaldo, who was the fifth shooter, didn't even take didn't one. Didn't even take one. Yeah. And it yes. makes you wonder, do you look at Sari here or do you look at Ronaldo? Yeah. Who yeah. picked the shooting, uh, you know? I mean, it's got to be the coach's lineup. I mean, I can understand wanting your – between your two best shooters, I want them first and fifth. I know that. Uh, but, I mean, I, I couldn't say a coach is at fault to put Ronaldo shooting fifth. Who's going to think that your players aren't going to make – the first two or three shots, you know, like you gotta have faith in the rest of the team as well. Get Ronaldo in that position. Dude, <laughs> we're, we're watching it right as now. As you were talking, we watched this. Dybala, <laughs> you would have blocked Dybala's shot, and then Danilo was up next. He just, just fucking just wanked it. Blast. Donk- oh my god! Donkey did. Yes. Donkey did. I always have a little sympathy if the keeper blocks your shot, but if you miss the Absolutely. goal, to me, there's no excuse for that. No excuse. No, man. No excuse. Absolutely. At least hit the frame. If you hit the frame, then you get a little bit more sympathy. But, like, outside the frame, like, that's on you, man. It, it, yeah, exactly. It's amazing. It's I remember amazing one of the best PK saves I ever saw was in the World Cup with, uh, uh, I can't think of his name, Ospina against England. England won their first one. But they put the, mm. I forgot the shooter for maybe Henderson, ripped it into the corner low. It was a great PK shot, a rocket, and Ospina just – Guess right, then reacted. It was probably one of the best one-handed saves I've ever seen a PK. Like that, I mean, I can't take away from the shooter. He would shoot another PK shootout for me. But when you sky it, you know, the Baggio style, it's like, <laughs> and, you know, get three <laughs> points on a field goal. It's like, nah, man. There's, you got to put it on frame. That that England versus Colombia? Yeah, that was that was a fun one. Yeah, yeah. I was, was watching with some Colombia. I just remember I was save as a goalkeeper, just low, full stretch. There's a rocket that he saved, yeah. Like a shot Doesn't like that, he play like for thing. Keep it. With Napoli. You gotta put it on frame, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, that's like the, the as a coach, that's all I'm asking. Just at least put it on frame. Come on, like, come on, guys. Not, just stop blasting yeah. stuff. Like, come on. Put it. Put the pressure on the keeper. Yeah, you know, exactly. at least make if it's him on make frame. It's the, the safe. He's got to make the save. We can handle it. We keep it together. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Napoli are uh, they're on great form right now. They just won Coppa Italia. They're uh they're they're marching on up to the top four, I believe. I think last time we checked, 
they were in seventh place. They're now in sixth place <laughs> uh, with 42 points. Let's just go quickly through the Serie A table. Juventus at number one with 66. Lazio today fell. They lost three points. They are now in second place with 62 points. Now four points out of the top spot. Inter Milan are in third place with 58. Atalanta with a win today are now in fourth. Oh, they were in fourth, but they're in fourth place with 54 points. Roma in fifth with 48. Napoli in sixth with 42. And AC Milan in seventh with 39. And actually, we'll go to the top 10 here. Uh, Parma in eighth with 39. Verona in ninth with 38. And Cagliari in 10th with 35. Um, that top six spot is up for grabs. It's um, it's a 42 point right now. The the remaining five teams, one, two, three, four, what, four teams, uh, are only within seven points. And uh, those top teams, I know they have a bunch of games against each other. Milan is playing Roma this weekend. That's going to be a very fun game. Um, Atalanta. Who is Atalanta playing this weekend? Uh, uh, Udinese. Uh, Udinese. 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 Oh, and actually, we got some scores that have recently happened. Booty, you want to catch us up on those? Uh, fun one today, in case you missed it, folks. Yeah, uh, Lazio, who was right behind Juve. Of course, as Hugh just mentioned, um, as of right now, they are four points behind. They needed that win against Atalanta. They scored two goals in the first 11 minutes of the game. Wow. You go up 2 nothing. Atalanta, Hugh Cinderella. Hey, baby. The <laughs> ship he's driving comes back and wins 3-2. to two. It's a fun one. It's on ESPN+. Plus. If you got we're, ugh, I hate plugging ESPN. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> anyway, you, if you got ESPN+, Plus, please go back and watch it. If you're bored, Travis, if you didn't see it, go check it out. My yeah. friend, it was a fun one. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I, I was able to tune in every once in a while while I was waiting for things to kind of load and yep. and get some, some people to brainstorm with me. Great goals, too. By the Fantastic way. goals. Um, Sergey Malinkovic Savage had a little banger, fucking, a drip, just dripped one yep. in, bro. It was a sweet banger. Um, and then the goal to was it to Mil-Mil. tie the game. Mel Mel, yeah. Ma- Mali- Malinowski. Malinowski. Yeah. Malinowski hit a fucking screamer. I'm talking like <laughs> like the net took his lunch money. Yeah, like type shit. Like. Like, it was bad. What, what did you say? You had a great one line. Uh, I was like, the net had a family. <laughs> yeah. like, How could you? I happened to look up, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. It had a family. And and at that point in the game, uh, I remember reading text saying that Antal- Atalanta had, like, f- they had flipped the momentum in their yeah. favor. Yeah. And as Mike Malone always says, throwing numbers forward with no regard. Yes. And they were just pounding the net, and it was inevitable. Inevitable. Yeah, looking at the, uh, did they the score? it looks like that. Like 21 shots to eight. Possession, 60-40. Yeah. 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 Was, and, and we were talking even before the, the pod. It's funny because we always talk about Atlanta just throwing numbers forward all the time. And they were getting just beat up on that counterattack by Lazio. That's how they got the two quick goals. But then they kind of they adjusted and they figured things out. They started dropping a few guys back, and next thing you know, three to two, bye, see ya. And Lazio does not get the perns. Dropping perns there. Dropping perns. So Juve still holding the four-point lead. Atalanta still Sigh in of relief, man. fourth. How far are they behind? Uh, fuck Inter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, appreciate that. Absolutely. They're only four points behind fuck Inter. Um, <laughs> above Inter. Above, above <laughs> yes. So, they can they can make this, they can clear the gap. I mean, right now, it's looking like they got Champions League next year in the bag. Roma's the next one behind them at 48. So uh, Roma are playing Milan this weekend on Sunday. Oh, that actually might be Very really excited. Game. Very excited about that game. It's an evenly matched one. Yeah. That's awesome. I would love to get those three points and uh, prevent Roma from advancing further up the table. But, uh. Some other games that that happened recently. Inter beat Sampdoria, June twenty first, two to one. Juve beat Bologna. They got back to their their winning ways, two nothing. Uh, that was back on June twenty second, and then you had Napoli against uh, Hellas Verona, uh, two nothing win for Napoli again. Napoli just on That's fire, true. as Hugh already said. Hot, shout out hot. to uh, how do, shout out to Gennaro Gattuso. Yeah. Getting yeah. the team midway through the season and and doing what he's doing, jumping in, 
Grabbing the reins, baby. He's going to be in his underwear. First title as a coach. Copa Italia. Go figure. Boom. And actually, did I send did I send you that stat where it was like he's been in like nine Copa Italias Wouldn't or something and yeah. and it. only lost one yeah. or something like that to Juve? Well, there you go. Would love to have him as a coach. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> he seems like a real raw rock kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Feel yeah. Feel like those tidy whities you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now a big game today. It just happened today. Uh, Inter had a chance to move up. They blew a lead late today. There was it was a fun one against Sassuolo. Really, really fun. It ends up three to three in a draw. Multiple lead changes within the last ten minutes of this game. But the main point here is Inter just dropping points when they could have. Ah, uh, dude, they 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 had a chance to close it out. If uh, Hugh just pulled it up just now, so they had the two no, or excuse me the two one lead for a hot minute. Then Sassuolo gets a penalty in the eighty first, converts, enter right back at him five minutes later. They go up three two, and then Sassuolo gets oh the eighty ninth minute. Oh that was a pretty God. that was a pretty one too by the way the very last one. Did you did you watch that one? I watched the <laughs> second half. Yeah. What'd you say, Travis? I was saying the guy's name. I like his name, but Sassuolo. Oh. You scored the goal. What's his name? Gian Giacolo. <laughs> I appreciate it. I was like, I'm going to say it. You got to say it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I'm going to go back and look at that one. I mean, if you look at this one, 18 shots to 11 shots, 50, even 50. possession. Yep. Uh, looks like there's a ton of fouls. So just probably a hard-nosed defensive game with a lot of open, stretched, attacking. Uh, that looks like a fun one. I wish I could have watched that one live. Yeah, didn't get to watch the whole thing, but it was fun when I watched. That's an interesting one because Inter dropped two points there. And in the tables here, when we're looking at these tables, Atalanta, with their win, became clo- four points closer. They're now four points within that third place to kind of secure themselves. Roma's knocking on the door. Napoli's knocking on the door. AC Milan are knocking on the door for that fourth place spot. I truly believe Milan can win out and get fourth place. I'm going to now take my steering wheel off the Atalanta ship and I'm going to put it on that AC Milan ship <laughs> and I'm going to steer them into fourth Feel place. Feel the same vibes. Yeah. Same vibes. Feeling. Same positive vibes. Let's it's go. It's Let's the same go. map. It's the same destination. We might get Ibra back, yeah. by the way. That's some big news. That's Ibra true. hurt his calf. Uh, there was rumors he'd be back for the Roma game this weekend. That'll not happen. He might sub in. I doubt it. When is that game? Friday or Saturday, Sunday? That's a Sunday game. It's a Sunday. Sunday game. Yeah, Sunday. I mean, yeah, game on Sunday. Field. Shot for, anytime he steps on the field, though, magic can happen. Oh, my God, dude. It's a shot in the arm. We, we've <laughs> been saying that since the uh, the January transfer window. I mean, you've seen it in Milan. We did an AC Milan episode. and This look better. Shout out my know. boy Joey from Ghana. Joey's been helping keep me sane during this pandemic, being able to just <laughs> talk AC Milan soccer. And uh, Ghana, he said it best. Joe. Ghana Joe, man. He said it best. Uh, Ibra has just changed – He's just put the whole club on its head with what he's brought in there as a leader, with his play, with his words. Everything. Um, and right now it's attitude. unfortunate. Attitude. Add, attitude Red. is what they needed. Winning attitude. I'm doing right. the Italian thing right now. Definitely has imagine, that. Imagine yeah, if you had too. Gattuso and Ibra. We almost had that. We yeah. almost had that, you man. Want Napoli? No, no. Oh. Gattuso was <laughs> oh, the coach was the last coach. year. That's right. Yeah. And he, the only reason he stepped down was because the fans wanted his head. Yeah. And when you look at it, you're like, man, it was one point. He was one point out of fifth, out of fourth place. They're, just a, they're impatient. Yeah, you know? no, impatient. I, I don't blame them for being impatient. They're like Browns fans right now. Like they they used to taste greatness. <laughs> it's been so damn long. <laughs> they just don't. They don't even like. They're just they're off with their heads. Everybody, give yeah. me wins or you're done. Yeah, it's and it's it's unfortunate. Can't hate. Can't it's hate. Well, but yeah. So we got some exciting games coming up for AC. Not for AC for the Serie A. Inter are playing against Parma. In one second here. One second here. Hang tight. <laughs> Friday, we have Juventus versus Lecce. We're going to have Lazio Fiorentina on Saturday. AC Milan and Roma on Sunday. We're going to have Inter on Sunday as well. Atalanta on <laughs> Sunday as well. Inter versus Parma on Sunday. Atalanta versus Udinese. Lots of really good games. Uh, I would tune in for the Milan Roma game. Yeah, that's going to be a really good game, in my opinion. It's looking the best out of uh, all the ones we mentioned so far. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. And um, 
as we said, I mean, as you know, as we mentioned, that's going to have big implications for UCL and for Europa. Yeah. So which is it's valuable now. I I get it now. I get it. Europa is important for these fifth and plus sixth place teams. Yep. Yep. yep, 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 yep. But looking at next Thursday, you have Atlanta and Napoli on next Thursday. Ooh. Ooh. Ho. Ooh. That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be a fun one for sure. Mark it down. (laughs) Oh, and then I'm that that follow the Saturday right after that is Lazio Milan. It's gonna be a fun Fourth of July. Gosh. Definitely has some crucial games coming up in the next week or so. That's right, man. Got That's the right. Turin Derby too. Oh, yeah. Juve Torino. Oh Torino. shit! Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be fun. And I mean, granted, Booty and I, as as most of y'all know, we're both biased towards Serie A, so we had to kind of pause here for a little bit and <laughs> talk about this mm. a little bit more in depth. I'm gonna go clean up my mess I made. <laughs> <laughs> New pants. With that being said, anyway. we brought on an EPL specialist. Travis is one of the one of the few people I know who's very adamantly following the championship. The second division in the EPL, for those who don't know. Oh, my goodness. So let's get into the EPL, Travis, shall we? Do it. I'm excited. Let's do it. It's easy on my heart. Let's do it. Who's your your English two-league team, Travis? I need to know. I I like a lot of them, but, I mean, uh, they're they're familiar faces in the EPL as well. I think West Bromwich and uh, Leeds, I believe, are the two front runners. But, I mean, I I like like the underdogs, man. So any of the teams making a run at the top. uh, Is it Fulham in that? Yeah, Fulham, Fulham, in, Fulham that? Uh, in place for a playoff position, which is probably some of my favorite games to watch because three, four, five, and six go to a semifinal final for the, the third position. And the, those are just intense games to watch, man. It's like $100 oh, million, yeah. 100 million pound paydays on the line, you know. Sure. Uh, Can you explain that real quick for those who don't know what that is, the playoff? Yeah, the, the playoff uh, for the Champions League for the promotion and relegation, the top two teams in the Champions League automatically advance. And then the teams who finish three, four, five, and six enter a seeded playoff. Six will play three, four will play five in a double leg semifinal. And then the final at Wembley, I think it's coined the most uh, expensive game in the world because the winner gets the EPL shared revenue of like 160 million pounds. Oh, and, uh, wow. Like, and I know it's like the historically one of the most finals with the most red cards. It's a, it's a lot of passion. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. At that point, you leave it all on the field, man. you like, that red card's not going to last next, the, the following season, is it? Or is it? I think, I think they do. I think it does. They feel they, I think it goes through all the way. I think they're suspended. That's, a hunt- for- <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Oh, my God. I feel like you've seen those highlights on, like, that'll, like, float around on viral videos where it's two teams going up against each other and, like, they just the highlight of that game is just red cards and there's like five red cards. Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, there's goals being yeah. scored. It's like goal, <laughs> red card, red card, goal, 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 red card, red card. You're like, what the fuck is going on over there? Got the hundred sixty million dollar payout. Shit, that's got to be such a great game to watch. It's fucking try nuts. To tune into that one next time. I think wasn't it on like ESPN Plus or something like that last year, like yeah. the final. I think I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was. I want to say I want to say that's how Brighton and Hove Albion got in. They were like this. They finished six on like the last day of the season. Like they won another team lost, so they made the playoff and then they ended up winning the playoff to get in. Wasn't it like Derby County and something like that last yeah, year? Derby, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Derby County. Is that Lampard? Villa, so that, well, it's, it's, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it was Lampard. I believe, I believe it was Derby County and Aston Villa last season. I think uh, that's how Aston Villa got in. Oh, okay. Oh, Aston Villa got Aston in. Villa beat them and then they got promoted. Okay. Wow. Crazy. That's nuts. Well, now it's fucking Rooney. Falcon. Yeah. Falcon like Rooney's coming. Falcon Rooney. First player coach. Woo-hoo-hoo. Player <laughs> and coach, I should say. They're still <laughs> in it, right? Is that? Is Derby County still in it right now? I believe Derby County, uh, I think they're in the, man, you got me right there. I think they're in the, uh, the lower league. Yeah, they're, they're in the Champions League. Uh, Champions Division. Sorry, not Champions League. Okay. It's called like Champions One or something like that? Yeah, it goes like the Premiership, the Championship. League one, league two. Okay. Got gotcha. it. I had to go pull this up. Nottingham Derby Forest. County, 12th place. Swansea. Yeah. yeah, a lot of these guys Dang, are really familiar. A lot of these teams are very familiar. Wigan. Stoke. Damn. Wigan, dude. Wigan and Stoke about to, whew, they're about to get put in timeout. Hull City. <laughs> Jeez. Hull City is about to, yeah. Barnsley. Talk about it. Ball. <laughs> Chew. <laughs> Chew, man. <laughs> Every time I do cool. like my so, season, I start with like one of these teams and like take them to the promised land. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! That's actually got to be a lot of fun. I'm love sure. that, love that. 
Fucking cool. right, dude. So let's let's get into some uh, some of the results from uh, these past few days and today. Let's do it. Liverpool, they're getting closer. They're inching. At Crystal yeah. Palace today, they wipe the floor with them for zip. Magic number oh. now is three for Liverpool. So that means one win, one Manchester City loss or draw gets yeah. them that elusive 30-year title. Yeah, I think they got plenty of, I'm glad they restarted the season and didn't end it. You know, with no title holders, I think that'd have been a snub at Liverpool. Uh, yep. So yeah, and that, that yeah, they basically almost had it when the season went on break. You know, they, and I think they, I think they got clinched. You know, within this week or the next. Would have been shitty for week. for the fans too. They're they're hurting for it too. Speaking of fans, they're hurting. Just just come on. <laughs> these these guys want they want to celebrate bad. Come on. Let's just give it to them. <laughs> it's such a shame that they're gonna have to like celebrate in front of nobody after yeah, all this but right. but you know what i'd still i'd take it i'd I'm take sure it outside yeah. that stadium they'll realize or whatever then they're not walking alone or whatever the song goes yes <laughs> yeah, yes that's right there will be no masks that's right <laughs> <laughs> everybody's gonna go nuts yeah, Liverpool will be on fire <laughs> man shoot what, what else we got here so we got man city with an ass kicking over burnley five nil on june 22nd yeah. Leicester with a draw, 0-0. Zero, zero. Did you catch that game, Man City-Burnley, Travis? Uh, I caught pieces of it, but, uh, I mean, it was it was pretty much, I mean, it's Man City. They had it sewn up from, I think, uh, the 20th minute. I want to say it was 2 nothing or 3 nothing, and they never looked back. And Burnley barely ever looked like they were in that game, to be honest. Let me ask you this one. Did you catch any of the Chelsea-Aston Villa? Pulisic yeah, coming you know, off the bench? Definitely, uh, I think. Yeah, I saw that. I saw Pulisic uh, got a goal. Uh, I believe in that one. I think so. Uh, and uh, yeah, I did watch it. Uh, unfortunately, though, I wasn't going for Chelsea. Even though Pulisic is on is on a team, I, I just uh, I can't I can't find <laughs> ever pull for I, Chelsea. I, I wonder why, man. I wonder why that is. That's interesting. <laughs> no, I'm messing. <laughs> but uh, I, I've been building the championship uh, last year, and I'm, I'm a fan of like this squad. I like the captain Jack Grealish. I thought he played a good game. That just at the end of the day, they were outclassed by Chelsea. Uh, but they, they they win the fight. They put up a good fight. I, I thought. Yeah, it was two one, cool. man. You're in that game. Two one win. You give them another ten minutes, that could change easily. Yeah. Yep. Easily. Did you catch any of the Man United games? Uh, first, first being of course they played at Tottenham with the one one draw. Shut up. Back on June nineteenth, <laughs> Jose got shut up. Shut up. He got the shut up big time. Oh, man. And then today, but they, they ended up tying. I guess that's the next best thing. Yeah. But so today they look fantastic apparently because they did what they didn't do that game before that against Tottenham. Fernandez and Pogba both were starting together, and apparently they were very impressive. Yeah, I did watch the whole Man U Sheffield United game today, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was almost boys against men to be honest. Uh, Sheffield normally comes out and puts up a good fight, and I didn't say they played bad because they really didn't. They had they had a couple good looks at the goal, but. I mean, Man United and just uh, Marcus Rashford. Uh, yeah, they just, yeah, they, they were just uh, the better team, hands down. And they they got a deserving three nothing victory today. I tell you what, when I watched Man U Tottenham, and when the moment when Pogba subbed on, it was obvious that he was a he was the better player, and yeah. I mean, within seconds, he had this incredible full extension tackle right outside Tottenham's box. You know, when you can make an open field tackle in the other team's defensive third, recover the ball, and then put in a, put some kind of chance in on goal, mm-hmm. that's an amazing play, man. Yep. I don't I know how you're doing that, but... Probably gets a that, lot of snack, and I think he's one of the world's greatest, but one of the best holding midfielders I think I've seen play in the EPL in a long time. So I know a lot of people like naysayers, and they, they think he's never uh, performing up to their standards, but... I mean, no one dominates the midfield like him. And when I watch him play, it's just he's impressive to watch. Yeah. And I think it's really great that they have Matic. Was Matic in the field today? Did he play? Oh, Looks like man. he did play. Yeah. Matic, when he when Pogba has a true center defensive mid next to him, whether it's Matic or Conte, it really allows him to go forward and be creative. And then when you have a player like Bruno Fernandez who can link up with Pogba with the same level of technique – and, Pogba and soccer out. IQ, yep. they can work off of each other. And, and Pogba can can kind of do this rotation where Bruno Fernandes can go forward and attack the net and, and vice versa. Pogba can then go forward and attack the net. It really makes it difficult Definitely. 
for the opposing midfielder to to just put a put a front and screen that back line. It's just extremely difficult. I really wish I could have watched that game, just because Pogba from the first from the from the blow of the whistle. I mean, he's a different he's player. Old. Yeah, you know, he's. Uh, I often I don't know if you remember um, that men's league that they used to do at Moore Park. Travis, do you remember that league? <laughs> I do, Man. yeah. Dude, I so I used to I used to have some teams out there. There was a few players on my team that if I did not start them, they were just absolute dog shit. If I yeah. would try and sub them in, even after like ten minutes, they were just dog shit. It made such a big impact on them to just yeah. start the game on the field. It's that mentality. It's crazy. Yeah. And I feel like Paul yeah. is yeah. one of those guys, yeah. He's not that. necessarily one of those guys because that last game when he subbed on, he was playing with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. But when he starts the game, he he's like, "All right, we're here to win it." You he know? drew he yeah. drew the foul too. That we we didn't mention. Yeah, that. I think really? he's a starter yeah. though. I think he should start. Oh, that's right. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm and like Booty Coach makes a good point here against Tottenham. Pogba was the player that drew the foul that allowed them to tie the game for the mm-hmm. PK for the PK. So um, I, I really want to watch Pogba. Show. What's that? Today was the Anthony uh, Martial show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah hat trick. Yeah. 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 But, what did you yeah. think of those three goals? Were they uh, were they all like wow, impressive goals, or was it like? I don't think any of them stood out as like the goal of the week candidate, but they were well earned. Uh, they were solid finishes. Uh, he actually blew a couple, to be honest, too. He probably could have had five. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> Damn! Yeah. It seemed like they were. I only saw. I only saw his goals. I'd say the third one, which Pogba plays a, a big key role in. We're about to see. We have it up right now. Uh, I, I felt like they were just well set up. Yeah. They did. They, they 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 were looking for him all day, and they found him in quite a few goal scoring opportunities. He was a target man, but uh, I mean, he got three for five from what I saw. So it's not a bad day at all. A hat trick is not right. a bad day. Not a bad day. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Man U defense as well for keeping a clean sheet despite having David De Gea in the in the goal. Who's personally, I think he's he's dropped in form. Dude. I don't know if if that's a personal opinion, but I mean that the goal that he allowed against Tottenham. That yeah. was a that was a just goal mistake. That was an dunk. error, man. Yeah, that was a it hit your thing. hands. What's that? I said it was rough too. I felt it was an error. Uh, I mean, some people might think it, whatever. Yeah, he should have got it. Shouldn't have got it. But as a goalkeeper, I know I would have been mad had that goal gone in. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I don't know if y'all saw, but Roy Keane wanted to fight him at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> He's Roy Keane fight. apparently had enough. <laughs> just <laughs> to him at halftime. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was gonna fight him. I mean, he's the most like stereotypical Irish thing ever. <laughs> I'm gonna fight that I'm so fucking sick line. of his full cups. Yeah. See you at halftime. Yeah, <laughs> gonna he put him to sleep. Him. He's not a coward. He'll fight you. He'll fight, he'll fight over anything. <laughs> what we're having oh, for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I think somebody had somebody had text Hugh and I that information, and I remember being like. Yeah, have you ever saw he like tried to fight his coach like at the World Cup? Like, <laughs> yeah. he was not playing games. Like, he found out they were practicing in a parking lot, and he was not very happy. Oh like, my god! Like, fuck, <laughs> trying to have a civil discussion. We're just going straight to brawl. Yeah, he's like, I'm going home, and they're like, What? He's like, Yeah, you're a wanker. I'm going fuck home. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Oh god. <laughs> Go look it up if you're bored, dude. It's great. <laughs> like, he goes off on the Irish coach. It's awesome. And the Irish coach is like, Wait, what? Like, I, well, uh, no, I don't want you to go home. He's, no, I'm done. I'm done here. <laughs> you lie. He's like, you lied to me, Mick. You lied to me this whole time. <laughs> you a liar. You a wanker. <laughs> it was like a 30 minute documentary. But it was between Roy Keane and uh, Patrick Vieira, and they sat down oh, as, uh, and talked about their days as captain in Arsenal and captain in uh, being a captain of Man United. And uh, and I've had to remember the name of it, but man, it, it was really good. It was just a 30 minute. Uh, between you know two rival captains, and they're finally sitting down talking it out about how intense those games used to be in the late '90s and early 2000s. And it's pretty cool. You got to see a civil side of Roy Keane and the side where he shows respect <laughs> to his you know uh, opponent rather than just wanting to fight him. So it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool to watch. I'd be, uh, be cool. To watch. Oh, so, shit. Uh, let's get in some some more uh, results here. We had the Wolverhampton West Ham game ended 2-0. Wolverhampton cruising, man. They look really great like too. that team. Really, yeah. really like that team. Um, Six place. Who's the Who's the striker? Fudge. What's his name? Jimenez. Jimenez. Dude's on form, killing it. Yeah. 
Really, I like really uh, great to see him, uh Beast of a player for Wolverhampton. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're we're big Triore guys too. Just the speed, man. Speed, yeah, like speed kills with him. He uh, he, it's you love seeing Mexican players show up on a big stage because it's very rare. The last one I can remember is Chicharito. Yeah, you know, like yeah. who else? Who who's another Mexican player that was very consistent in in yeah. European uh, soccer? Carlos Vela for Arsenal for a little while. That's right. That was cool. Yeah. See, I, I always think about Chucky Lozano, but he's not consistent enough. Which he he scored yesterday, I believe, oh. for Napoli. And uh-huh. he, he's kind of he's kind of a different style of player. Yeah, but, uh, that's a good one. I like that because he is he is still he's very world class. Relevant. Yeah, he's on the scene for he, sure. Just not as consistent as we're we're talking about. Yeah, not know? I would say not a prevalent goal scorer too. Yeah, more of a kind of a midfielder ish attacking midfielder player. I'd agree with that. But uh, he's still young. Yep. So plenty of time for him to kind of fill into that role and. And, uh, you know, put Mexico on his back in the European scene. Yeah. Uh, moving on, moving along to some other games, Tottenham versus West Ham, June, uh, June 23rd. Tottenham, Mr. Mourinho himself, got a 2-0 win. There you go. So, uh, the he's, he's, what's that? It's a London derby. Uh, West Ham's actually from the east side of London, but the both in Tottenham from the north side of London. But, yeah, the derby match, it's always a big rivalry in the, in the city of London. Damn. The hammers, yep. so they're they're about to be bumped down to your league. We were just talking about it. I heard. I got a yeah. friend who's yeah, a big hammers fan, league. and he was saying that uh, they've now lost like two in a row, or actually, yeah, both right there, two in a row, no no goals in, in two games, and, and yeah, they they're, they're d- too. I, I don't know if it's a coaching thing, but they have uh, is Pellegrini the coach of uh, West Ham, I think. Oh, West Ham. Let's see. Manuel we're pulling it up. They have, a, they have a pretty solid squad. It's just, I don't yep. know. You can't get it together. Damn. It's either, it's either David Moyes or Manuel Pellegrini. I thought it was David Moyes. It oh. must have been a switch then. I missed. David but, uh, Moyes. Moyes. Yeah. It must have been a half Moyes. season takeover. I want to say Pellegrini started it because I want to say he signed like Jack Wilshire and a few other players at the beginning of the season. Wow. Wow. All so right. Must, must sacked him. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> shit. It'd be like that in the EPL, man. Yep. <laughs> Gotta have results. Good day. Gotta have results. <laughs> well, uh, with that all that being said, let's get into some standings here. Liverpool, as everybody knows, is clearly in first place with 86. Yeah, man up. City, in, right behind him. No, I'm just kidding. 60, <laughs> 63 points. Leicester City with 55. Now, this is where it gets interesting to me. When we hit this fourth place right here, we got Chelsea with 51. We got Man U in fifth place with 49. We got Wolverhampton in sixth with 49. We got Tottenham in seventh with 45. We got Sheffield with 44. Sheffield kind of seems to be falling off, though. Crystal Palace behind them in ninth, 42. Everton, 41 points. Arsenal in 11th with 40. Oh, well, man. <laughs> to me, per- yeah. I, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there's still time. There's still time. I'm only going to 11th place. That's no good. Uh, yeah, you know, there's still time, and it's still really close. It's I really points. think so. It's eight points. I, I think yeah, every seven Arsenal games will left. We throw Sheffield United and Crystal Palace, no problem. By the time the season's over, eight eight I'm points between you and Champions League. There you yeah. go. <laughs> and, and only a f- only a few points here between you and Europa, at least. You yeah. know, that's yeah. right. Five yeah. points. Yeah, there's also not that many points, like you said, flirting with that relegation line. No, we're only thirteen points above that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. You even think Arsenal would get relegated? Oh man! Oh my God! I'd have to hide. I <laughs> have to know some Arsenal fans that would, season, you know. <laughs> man, that would that would feel bad for you. I Damn. know some Arsenal fans that would probably just go run across the highway. Just yeah, I'm yeah, done. I'd be done. I'm done. I'm really, done. If Arsenal got relegated, I'd probably have to become a louder Arsenal fan. I'd be broadcasting. <laughs> 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 just jump on the jump on the Newcastle bandwagon, you know. Oh, God, New, really Newcastle, but they get all that money, you know. <laughs> that's funny. I got I got a couple of Man U friends that are on that same Arsenal level as as we're talking about right now. One day he was just like, "I'm about to be a fucking Newcastle fan. Fuck this." It's like rooting for Newcastle anyway. <laughs> I started thinking about. It, I was like, "Yeah, it's kind of true." <laughs> like yeah, we won by three today. Ah, we lost by five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. But hey, if you're looking, if you're looking at what the big dongs are up to next, I can, I got you here. 
Uh, Liverpool win. <laughs> funny, funny way to close this out. If they can do this, if they can clinch, that next game is at Man City, which yeah. is on July 2nd. So yeah. that'll be fun. Now something else to look forward to is Chelsea and Man City, which is tomorrow, 2.15 p.m. Are you people in the Central American time? That one's going to be a fun one. That's going to be all over the place. Ooh, boy. Well, Man City have to win that one, right? Man City have to win that one or else. Well, I think it's it, if Man City continues to win, Liverpool has also has just got to win. Yes. As I think yeah, you exactly. said earlier, if Man City loses, then yeah, Liverpool Three-point in. difference, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So if, they, if Man City ties that one. They probably Liverpool don't chance. even care. Yeah, at this yeah. point, I mean. Liverpool's going to win their game. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, you actually I don't know, man. I that I mean, I think they're both going to go for the pride win. Yeah. I have to agree. I, I mean, it I think Liverpool will win, but I think Man City's not going to go down easy. Man City's got yeah. a lot to prove with being relic, you know, with being yeah. knocked out of, you know, no I Champions think, League in the next couple of years, but Yeah. At this point, Man City's in there to just ruin people's days. Yeah. Okay, we're not in Champions League, but we're going to try and make sure that your trip to the Champions League is not easy. Don't we're going to just up. knock you down. Yep. You, you know they're going to go hard. What's that, Travis? So you play to win the game, so you're going to come out there Hell and yeah. be competitive regardless of whether you're relegated or you already, you've already booked your ticket to the Champions League. You're going to come out there and, and be competitive. All right, man. That's Chris, right. Chris Berman, I said on the show before, that is why <laughs> they play the game. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so what other big dong games we got, Booty? We got Leicester at Everton, July 1st. Hello. Love me some Leicester. Love some Jamie Vardy, who is leading the Premier League in goals. Yep. If you didn't know. Uh, that's a little fun fact for you, a little Jeopardy fact. <laughs> Next, let's see who else we got. Uh, we already said Chelsea tomorrow. We got Man U at Brighton on June 30th. We got the Wolves, who are right behind Man U, at Aston Villa. That's going to be on June 27th. And we got Tottenham. Old Jose is going against Sheffield United on July 2nd. So that is going to be a banger. In the meantime. We can get this Pierre uh, Aubameyang situation sorted out because he's only two goals behind Jamie Vardy in the uh, Mm. race for the golden boot, but – I don't know what's going to go down with that. I hope he signs another uh, contract extension. But I'm glad you mentioned that because we were just about to jump into some transfers. So, That's is right. there rumors that he is about to sign a new deal, or they're trying? Arsenal's trying to sign a new deal. What, what, what you know? Hey, if Arsenal wasn't trying, I, I'd probably, I'd probably have a real problem with that. I mean, he's a world class striker, so I know they're trying, but I know there's, you know, a lot of talk. He's getting a lot of offers. I know that. I think Atletico Madrid was one offer that wants him. Man United is the most recent one. I heard trying to uh, steal him away. So I guess we'll just have to see what happens with that whenever, whenever it happens. But I'm hoping he signs with Arsenal. But I've heard so many is rumors there, on call it. Are there any uh, numbers on the table as far as the no- the length of the contract or what they're going to offer him? I haven't heard the uh, the length, but I want to say, I mean, the uh, they always break it down in like per week. But, I mean, I, don't, I can't see Arsenal being bashful with the money side of it. I, I think it's just – him making the decision of that's where he wants to go the next three or four years of his career, you know? Yeah, and that's a good point. This point, next move. Yeah. Doing, I couldn't necessarily blame him if he did leave, but I think him leaving or staying is going to make a big difference on the future Arsenal. Agreed. But at the same time, you, you love seeing that kind of money walk in the door. Uh, is this the last year of his contract or is it up next summer? No, if uh, this is the last year, I believe. Uh, so I believe if he doesn't sign, he would be. He has twelve months remaining on his contract. So, uh, okay. So, if that's the case, they either need to re-sign him now or sell him this summer. Exactly. That's that's the thing. So he wouldn't leave on free transfer at the end of the season. He would have for another year. But going into that year, yeah, you know, you definitely want so to sell at least him that money. Yeah, I was about if, if at least if that's the case, Arsenal can get some money and. Spend it on another two or three players that are, uh, you know, Mikel Arteta is going to have some players in his uh, his back pocket that he was scouting while at Man City. So, yeah, and it, being a younger maybe, coach, he's played with some of them, you know. So that's right, that's right, man, that's right. That I, I wouldn't if it if he is sold, it's definitely. I feel like Arsenal fans are going to be upset because he's such a world class striker. But man, as soon as it's sold, you're going to be happy you got that payday because it's. 
now it's time to go after some big money moves here. Definitely. I'd have to agree. But I would, as a fan, I'd like to keep him, man. He's scored some magnificent Agreed. goals. He's a, he's, a, he's a threat anytime he's on the field. He's, his speed is unmatched by many players in the, in, in the world. You know, he's at the lightning fast quickness, you know, like a 4 3 yep. 40 type of speed. Damn. So I got to ask you, we've had some Arsenal fans on the show, and they've all complained about where he is put on the field. Do you believe he's being held back, being played on the left wing? Uh, I would like to see him uh, more like where they tend to play Lacazette uh, or, or Martinelli as a striker. But I believe his he, he's, he's going to gravitate towards the ball. I feel like his speed actually plays for, better for the team out on the wing because I mean, he just creates so many chances from outside the box. And if he, if he turns it in instead of taking it to the corner, I mean, he makes defenders just literally pretty much shit on themselves. You can watch them you know, <laughs> back back over their own feet, you know, because they don't know what to do because – Obama Yang's running right at him, and uh, he definitely. I think he creates a lot of havoc from the wing, but I think I would like to see him too uh, up top as a striker role because he's a natural finisher as well. But yep, yeah, and that, so, that's been the discussion we've held on on some of these podcasts where, you know, like you said, his speed does benefit him on the wing, but he's a natural striker. That's where the, everyone saw him succeed at Borussia Dortmund yes. in that number nine role. So mm-hmm. it's it's kind of hard to to kind of validate both sides where it's like, he's got the speed for the wing, but he's got the goal score. Exactly. It's nine. It's like, ah, it, where do you put for the wing, You have the speed for the up top too. If they would make the fast breaks from Arsenal, which they don't do very often. They like to right. set up and, and, and set, settle in in front of the box and pass it around. Like it's a basketball game, you know, the top of the box and look for that perfect <laughs> pass in goal. Sometimes that can get frustrating, but I believe when Obama Yang's at, you know, dead center top of the field, a ball over the top now is is not out of the question on being a legitimate threat. That's right. That's right. Is there uh, is there any more news from Arsenal that you can tell us? Uh, I know they signed uh, David Luiz today, and they uh, like I said, they increased the uh, they got the extension on uh, Sabalos's uh, loan. Uh, I know they're looking for some defenders, but that's the, that's been the case for the past six years. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I, I know, like, I did hear about the, uh, how do you say his name, the Upakano? I, I can't ever say Upamakano. his name. Upamakano. Yeah, Upamakano. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so I know I've heard a lot of rumors uh, going with him, but I think that would depend on if Obama yanks things. If, I think if he leaves, I think, boom, I think that's the next signing Arsenal will make. Uh, and they'll give Martinelli uh, a shot at the front man and striker position and bring in some uh, world-class defenders which we would say we desperately need. Actually, that's a that's a good point that you you go down that direction because I absolutely I, I think that's probably the better route. Uh, yeah. Go sign a world class center back, which is so vital in the EPL these days. You know, you have Martinelli, who's proven that he can do it on the right. big stage. We saw him do it many times. Yeah, they still have ball. Lacazette, and there was another player that Arsenal was playing up front, and I don't know his name. What did, could you? Is it Lacazette? Help me out here. It was another player starting striker and uh, it was against Man City. Is it Saku? Is it, but, uh, could be. I'm Saku, trying to remember yeah. his name. <laughs> I'm not too sure. I, I know it's uh, been Lacazette or Obama Yang or uh, Buyako Saku. I can't I think if I'm saying his name right. It has been a youngster and Martinelli, pretty much who we've been going with uh, as the as the strikers. Okay. Let me go. Obama Yang's been fit. I mean, it's his position. Uh, it's him and Lacazette. They like to play together. And yeah, I know they yeah, put yeah. Obama Yang out on the wing on the paper, but I mean, as the game goes, it's almost like he has no position, you know? Yeah, he just floats. And, yeah. Hey, bro, get open. Find the space. Exactly. So, also on the, the transfer rumor front, we've got a really big transfer. I'm going to pass it over to Booty to fill us in here. Who you we know, got? It's, it's your team, boy. That's my team? It's your team, boy. They might not be t- too long. <laughs> if they keep doing me wrong. Juve looking to get Artur for Ooh. 80 million bucks from Barcelona. Uh, there's a little side note to it, folks. Uh, technically, they've been trying to work out a swap deal for him and Pjanic. Uh, the way the books are lining up for Barca, they want to actually do this as a sale. So as of right now, it's looking like it's going to be a sale. Juve is going to pay $80 million to Barcelona. And then in return, 
it looks like Barca is going to pay them back sixty five million seventy. Um, that also being said, there's also a rumor that Artur doesn't want to leave. So that's also holding things up. So that's there. Um, another another big Juve rumor to throw out there is they're trying to work out a deal for Jimenez uh, from Wolverhampton. Really? They're trying to throw out a swap deal for Bernadeschi and Rigani hmm. for Jimenez. So that's their two go-to players for swap deals. Me, yeah, me personally, I uh, I don't think they need Artur, but. We have too many midfielders, as we've talked about many times on the show. Uh, I think we need to go after a striker because we haven't, and Bernardo or a obviously center needs help. Attacking to... mid, some some yeah. kind of attacking player that's not a CDM or box to box mid. Yeah, or I mean, they try to put that ball in that role, and he's he's a false nine. So let's false nine at best. I, I like him better on the wing. Yeah, you know he's he's definitely not a attacking midfielder. Yeah. A false nine, technically, you could argue as an attacking midfielder, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I to, wouldn't. He he doesn't he doesn't do well there. You're not a, you're not attacking enough for me to right. to push in that kind of bit. He he does really well as like a second striker. Yeah. If you're in like a four four two. Yeah. If you have uh, like a true number nine, like when Iguain was there or Menzukic was there. Yeah. DiBala did really well as a second striker behind them. Yeah. And right now, Sorry is – I don't think I've ever seen Sorry play a two-man attacking duo up top. He, maybe he's tried it once with Ronaldo Dybala. He has but before. But Ronaldo isn't a striker, so it's you just, right. you're forcing squares in the circle, blo- circle holes, you yeah. know? The typical shit that he's been doing since, I would say, post-Christmas. Yeah, if they win the league, uh, he'll he'll be very lucky to stay. I would still fire him if I was Juventus. Yeah, and just go go get just man. go get Allegri. Go get Pochettino or bring Allegri Pochettino, back. Pochettino, man. God, Whew. let's go. Uh, <laughs> Travis liked that one. <laughs> God, please, please. Oh, I tell you what, I would not be mad if Juventus went and uh, swapped, uh, not swapped, went and bought Paqueta from AC Milan. If they're willing to drop 80 million euros for our tour, they can go and spend 30 million for Paquita, which is the price that AC Milan have put on him right now. See, that's exactly what ticks me off about Juve, too. I'm like, oh, cool. We're talking about how we're barely staying afloat with the uh, pandemic, talking money wise, and we go drop $80 million on a position that we already have. Yeah, but like you were saying, drop you know, 80 on a striker. Like you were saying, it's it's technically a swap deal that's only worth 15 mil. Worth 50, yeah. You know, it's yeah. a 15 mil swap, but it looks good on the books. You brought in 80, yeah. you brought in 65. I haven't trained my brain to think that way yet cuz I'm too angry. <laughs> yeah, I'm working I'm working on it. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. There's also some <laughs> other transfer rumors. Mario Goza is definitely on the move. There's been rumors that he's going to be going to Atletico Madrid. There's been rumors that he's going to be going to AC Milan. There's been rumors he's going to Lazio. So be on the lookout for Mario Gozzo to get signed somewhere. I know the big issue with him is he's got a really big contract. Mm. So whichever team feels like paying him his contract. They have somebody that picks it up, yeah. He'll, somebody will pick him up. Joe um, Hart. What? Joe Hart on the move potentially to Arsenal. Whoa, Arsenal. That, you heard that? Is that something uh, you've heard? To replace Leno? I don't know, man. Not, Leno's been replace, a rock back but... there. He's been one of our best signings. I mean, Joe Hart, though, is solid. You know, can't sleep on Joe Hart as a goalkeeper. But I think mean, Bernardo Leno has been rock solid in, in affirming that his, you know, his number one and uh, the position of the goalkeeper for Arsenal. I can't see that being – I can't see Arsenal being in the market for a goalkeeper with everything else do, going on. That position do you have a, a decent backup for Leno? <laughs> Do you think Joe Hart would be a backup, though? Absolutely. Oh. I mean, the dude's <laughs> old. Yeah, he is old. I mean, definitely as a world class, as a backup, without a doubt. I mean, and as a, as someone that challenged Leno to keep him on his toes and uh and uh, keep him on his A game, I, it would definitely be a good addition. I just I think Arsenal should concentrate in uh, other areas before they sign a, a world class goalkeeper to be Agreed. a backup. You know? Agreed. Agreed. And he's coming from Burnley, so it's not like yeah, you know, it's that's a step up. I would imagine, like, hey, Joe, if you don't mind being a backup, we'll sign you to the Premiership. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's probably like, eh, all right, cool, well, I can do that. Yeah. Would you rather play? Or would you rather sit the bench for a world class team or, or play for a lesser team every game? I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. He's thirty three right now, so he might want to yeah. take a few seats on the yeah. you know spot on the bench and. And potentially get in one or two games when Leno gets injured or, you know, knocked yeah. up or whatever. 
Yeah, not definitely. Not I mean, pregnant. Uh, be, uh, <laughs> Leno got pregnant. Leno <laughs> got, yeah. <laughs> Wrong choice of words. <laughs> Leno got pregnant. <laughs> hey, uh, another transfer rumor that is more than likely going to happen is Thomas Mounier, who would be a free transfer to Borussia Dortmund. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, that's man. a good one, especially since they're losing Hakimi. Yeah. Um, they need someone to come in quickly and, you know, know that know exactly know the role, what, know know the role and know what they're gonna get. Yep. Uh, I was talking to our Bundesliga punt and Russell about this move, and for me, I remember Thomas Munier during the 2018 World Cup when they were playing a three four three, and Munier was mm. playing as a right wing back. Yeah. Um, and was very successful when doing it. Uh, I especially remember the game against Brazil. I mean, it was like. I was like, who the folk is this dude? <laughs> That's when I knew who that guy was, when he played against Brazil, because he did a really good job. I think that would be a good move for them, uh, especially if it's on the free-free. Ain't nothing, more the free, ain't nothing wrong with a free transfer, you know? Yep. Ain't losing nothing. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Thing. Yeah. Um, some more transfers that are that look like they're going to be more than, li- more than likely happening. Willian has been linked with a lot of teams here. We've got rumors of Arsenal – Manchester United, and there was another one, and I can't find it, but it appears as Chelsea is moving on. And, uh, Which means somebody is moving in. That's that's unfortunate, yeah, because I, I feel like he would even he would be a good player just to have on your team. He's a good locker room player. He knows the EPL very well. I like him better than Pulisic. Yeah. Great free kick yeah. taker. Great Definitely. free kick taker. Yep. You know, and yeah. um, what's that? You had something to say, Travis? Oh, I would say I'd love to see him in an Arsenal jersey. I think he'd be a good addition to the team. But like I said, I've heard so much sporadic transfer news. It's it's hard to hard to pinpoint where he's going to be headed. That's right. That's right. We just at least we know he's he's on the move. It it appears as if Chelsea have moved on, and um, I think they've both agreed. Okay, this is this is it. We're parting ways. But I mean, it's crazy. I was just I'm just thinking about this. Last summer, Neymar tweaks his ankle. Mm-hmm. Who does Brazil call? Willian. Man, what a yeah. great fucking player to call up Copa on your America. roster. Yeah. yeah. I mean, give him the 10 jersey and be like, yo, dude, let's rock. And he did. Uh, <laughs> granted, he wasn't a starter, but he looked great when he came on. Yeah, I remember seeing him a couple games for Copa. Was, Man. Yeah. Great player to come out, come off the bench for you, you know? The damn, Willian out means pull stitch in. It's time to nut up or shut up. Dude, they have to find out. That's for me why yeah. I don't like that because he is not a full season player. No, we're they're about to find that out. Yeah. They're, they're about to find out they were paid in that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I wanna I want a ballistic stand up at Arsenal with Obama Yang and Mkhitaryan connection like it was at Dortmund. Ooh. But, uh, it didn't happen. That'd be sexy. <laughs> that would Man. be sexy. That would be very sexy. <laughs> uh got a few more transfer news here. Uh one of them being Andrea Bellotti, who is a young up-and-coming striker out of Torino, linked with Inter. And the fact that that move has even got rumors associated with it really goes to tell you that there is a potential for Lautaro Martinez to be sold. You know, the fact that Inter are inquiring about another striker tells me that they're looking for a replacement. Because right now, you don't need a striker. Yeah. You've got Lukaku, you've got Martinez, and you've got Alexi Sanchez. And you've also got your boy from Tottenham, Erickson. You know? Yep. He can play as a second striker behind Lukaku. Yeah, I keep forgetting he's like a three. So it's it's really interesting. It's almost like a transfer news like this kind of is a is a clue as to what yeah. else is going to happen here. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's for me. That was the big thing uh, about that rumor. It's is, the domino. Exactly. The domino. It's one of the uh-huh. dominoes. Uh, and then another move that I really like. This is my last one. Tiago Alcantara is rumored to be going to potentially Liverpool. Like we all like we're saying, these are all rumors. But like Liverpool needs help. <laughs> man, it, uh, from what I've been reading, they want to drop Keita. Uh, and I mean, imagine bringing in mm-hmm. Tiago Alcantara. Next to Fabinho, next to Jordan Henderson. Gross. Jesus. Yeah. It's only worse from there. We, we two Champions League contenders in. I don't think Liverpool Seriously. needs any more help, though, man. They don't need to take – they get their one EPL title, and then they need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, for real. Jose, for real. come in and tell him shut up. Yeah, so uh, that that's uh, all my uh, my rumors for today for the transfer wire. 
we've got a few more, but I'll spare you. I'm sure you all have uh, have been have been doing your research and and Google and transfers. This is going to be an interesting summer. Uh, one more thing I need to pull up, and this is actually really important, is that uh, UEFA has relaxed the rules for financial fair play, and I need to do some more research on this. But uh, in the article I read, it said that they are going to not count this 1920 season by itself. And they're actually going to combine it with the following season. Oh, shit. So what that means is they'll be able to combine this season and next season as far as their, you know, transfer evaluation. Um, Which means, to me, if I'm a team that's struggling in this transfer window, best believe I'm going to drop like crazy in the next one. Yeah. So we might not see a lot of moves this window, but the next one, especially being right after the Euro or right during the Euro, we're going to see some wild moves. That's a hot take. That is a hot take. I'm going to go look Oof. further into that, but it was my understanding. I was talking to, to Ghana Joey about this. Ghana Joe and I were, were really uh, – we were speculating as to what that meant for some of these teams. Um, and, man, this, this, uh, could, this could really separate some teams or could really help out these lower-tier teams to catch up a little bit more because uh, so, they, could, they could then combine two transfer windows into one. Help AC. Help AC. Yeah. yeah, that's. I mean, that was the the topic for us. But yeah, uh, we'll see. There. Uh, uh, just another little side note. They're rumored to have eighty million euro to spend this transfer window. So be on the lookout for some hot transfers to out. to AC Milan. Who's rumored to have eighty million euros? I'm sorry. What? Sorry, I can hear you. What, what team is rumored to have eighty million euros? AC Milan are getting a brand new coach, Ralph Ragnett, wow. the director of sport from for all of the Red Red Bull teams. And they're going to give them 80 million euro to spend. Ooh, yeah, that's definitely something to look out for. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Tons of rumors. Been loving the rumors. I love watching the rumors of who might go where. Um, one of my favorites <laughs> that's still not official is Sandro Tonali. It's rumored that he's agreed to terms with Inter, but there's still a chance he might go to AC Milan. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to give up on that until it's official. <laughs> that's all you can do. Yeah, that's all you can do. That's all you can do for now. Yeah. It's about that time, Travis. At this point in time, at the Footy Fetter Show, we like to give the closing comments. And one thing that we like to do here, I'm not sure you've heard us do this before, but we do like to give a shout-out. Everybody gives a shout-out to anybody in the world. could be soccer-related, yeah. non-soccer-related. And it's your turn, yeah. my friend. I'm putting you on the spot. All right, Ooh. Well, I have to go with uh, the shout-out. Scott, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Nope, go ahead. Who's your shout-out? I have to go with uh, Scott LeBleu. He was my uh, goalkeeper trainer, and I have to get him on, listen to this show, make sure he does. But uh taught me a lot about goalkeeping, a lot about the game, just a lot about life. Uh, one, of my, one of the best coaches I ever had, so I definitely have to give a shout-out to him. Great shout-out. Coaches are always great shout-outs. Absolutely. Molding young minds. Molding young minds. And wieners. <laughs> Uh, who's yours? Oh, I got a good one. I'm going to shout out Old Time Grocery and Raphael, the two people involved for introducing Travis and I. (laughs) Travis, I'm actually just remembering a wild story, and I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be a little upset if you don't remember this. Uh oh. It was one night you and I were closing the uh, the fryer, and um, Uh do you? I don't know if you remember this. Uh, something malfunctioned on the fryer and it squirted 450 oh, yeah. degree oil. Oh. And I luckily put my arm up over my head and it just covered my arm in oil. Oh, Burned the fuck out of my arm. Ice packs. Travis was the manager oh, at the time. Man. He's like, he's like, oh shit. I'm like, it's fucking hot. <laughs> so he runs and goes and gets ice packs, right? <laughs> And we we like taped them to our arm because there's no one else back there to close the shop up, and there's still I think like an hour left until we close. Oh, oh dude, that was so it was night, Travis yeah. like, "Yo, I I need you. We need you to like close up. We still got to finish the fries." So I'm like, it "Should be like, like give ER. me some ice packs, bro." <laughs> so we taped ice packs to my arm. Holy shit! And I oh. fucking cleaned that shop and we closed out. But um, you told me to that, was, man. we closed yeah. that shit out, man. Oh. What was really interesting, and I don't know if you know this part of the story, but. I had scheduled the following week to be totally off because I had a graduation, my sister's graduation. I had like a championship game. I was going back to New Orleans. So I took the entire week off. Okay. The following week, I went in to go check the schedule and I wasn't on there. 
And like I remember walking in, everyone's eyes getting really big. And I'm like, what the hell? And all of a sudden, Ross walks up. He's like, hey, what are you doing here? And I'm like, what do you mean? I went to go look to see if I was on the schedule. He's like, you didn't show up last week. And I'm like, I wasn't on the schedule. That's why I didn't show up. He's like, oh, we thought you just quit because of that that whole accident with the oil. So uh, we found someone to replace you. And I'm like, oh, great. Fantastic. Like, thanks. (laughs) I lost my job after I burned myself with oil. And uh, I will say, ever since then, Ross has always told me happy birthday. I think because he's grateful I didn't, you know, like press charges for for (laughs) burning the fuck out of myself with some oil there, you know. I don't know. uh, Me and Ross got into it on my day off, man. I was over there helping him out after we burned some meatballs and left them in the oven or something. And we got into (laughs) it. He fired me on my day off. I was helping him off the clock, man. (laughs) Oh, my God, Like I said, to his credit, though, ever since, man, I mean, we're still still cordial, still friends, you know, like. But that was a heated day. But it was a weird story about how I left old time grocery too. I, I don't think anybody ever leaves there like, uh, you know, with, with a twenty one gun salute or flowers and parades. You know, it's yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled the Friday on you, huh? <laughs> Shit! How you get how fired you, on your damn. day off, man? Damn, that's fucked up. Yeah, I, I was working on my day off off the clock too. That's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. we getting paid for this shit. Damn, oh, dude. Yeah, but I got to give a shout-out because without Old Time and Raphael, I would have never met Travis. We never would have gotten all these these soccer discussions, oh, man. you know? Definitely, man. It's good times. Good times. <laughs> it's awesome. No booty. I love it. Who's your shout-out, buddy? And I'm going to give my shout-out to Tiger Woods Wells Booty. <laughs> what? That's my, uh, that's my cat. Um, <laughs> it's a little orange mother mother falter, and uh, he's a he's a fluffy pussy, and I, lo- I love the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> he's he, he's probably the biggest dick I know, um, oh, other than myself. Uh, complete asshole. Food, food, give me food, going to sleep. Food, food, give me food, going to sleep. Dad, I'm gonna go kill some shit for you and bring it back to you. You can eat it since you're an idiot. <laughs> like, can't tell you how many times he's brought me some dead shit. And I looked it up, and it's like, yeah, cats like bring you that because they think you're an idiot and you can't eat on your own. Mm. So he's just like, here you go, idiot. <laughs> he's a dead lizard. <laughs> So without him, uh, I've had him for, I've had him for eleven years now. Um, so he he is my son, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, lo- love the little guy to death. Can't wait to, can't wait to cuddle him till he pops when I get home. I love cuddling <laughs> pussy. It's fun. <laughs> so it's pretty Shout fun. Shout out so, Tiger. Shout out Tiger. You're a good Tiger. I, I, fa- I found him on the day that uh, Tiger Woods um, got caught by his wife doing bad things. <laughs> like he, so I I found little I found little Tiger oh, little Lord. little Tiger in a box and he was a kitten. Yeah, behind this restaurant I worked at, no oil sprayed on me, um, and uh, and I was feeding him taco meat, and he just kind of kept like running up to me, and I was like, all right, man, I'm gonna take you home. Didn't like cats or anything at the time. Brought him home. I was like, I don't know what to name you, but you seem like quite an asshole. And I remember like turning it over the TV, and I see like Tiger Woods escalated, just like back windows, like busted out, and was like, well, that was a dick move too. And the next thing you know. Uh, little Tiger, um, he meowed at me a few times to, to let me, you know, like, he's like, dude, let me out of the room. I didn't let him out of the room. He took a shit on my floor. He went to sleep. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's a dick move, too. Tiger Woods. All right. <laughs> and the story of Tiger. And the story of Tiger. Made it, there to you the go. Show. made it to the footy fetish show. Shout out to Tiger. He's Shitting on the uh, booty's floor and forever creating a great bond. Yes. Father and son. Uh, yes. I really like what he did to booty's floor there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it deserved it at the time, I'll be honest. It was uh, quite a nasty floor. It's like, clean this floor and let me go take a shit, you bitch. That's basically what he told me. <laughs> Squirt. Oh, well. Man, it'll be okay. Yep. I love, I love him to death, though. Such a dick, but I love him. <laughs> the public service announcement that we must get through before we get through the show is to be sure to follow us on the Facebook, on the Instagram, on the Twitter for the twatters. We're at Footy Fetish Show. <laughs> Nova Acai, if you haven't had it yet, folks, if you don't know what it is, you should eat some. Um... He was just saying that his neighbor is waiting for a fantastic and the right time to eat it. He's I think he should eat it now. Yeah. Eat uh, it now. Get some cereal in a bowl with some acai. Enjoy. Throw it together. All right. Boom, boom, boom. At Nova Acai Store or our website, NovaAcai.com. That's where you can buy it. We deliver. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, we deliver. <laughs> oh, you got, you got man. I'm not quite that far. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. unfortunately, we're just delivering to the GNO. So uh, the greater New Orleans area. So if yeah. you're out of there, I'm going to uh, respectfully refund your money. <laughs> Just well, not worth the trouble. Here soon, so I'll definitely have to check it out, man. Yeah, dude, I'll, I got a free sample for you with your name on it. 
Sweet, man. It's fantastic, by the way. I've been trying to come up with some alcoholic drinks with it. I haven't been as successful as others. I I did see somebody was. That reminds me. We've got a contest going on. Yep. If uh, We're going to do a drink contest to see who can create the the best tasting drink that has acai in it, and then we're going to name it after you. Yeah. So this, this happens to be one of my skills, fellas. Might have to be so, in the contest. There you I go. Can make all the beverages. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's in. <laughs> well, after you make the delicious acai drink with an alcoholic beverage mixed <laughs> in with it, and you make the most amazing alcoholic beverage ever, <laughs> you got to be sure to keep following us, folks. We want to thank you for following us. Thank you to all the Footy Fetish Army for holding it down for us, for spreading the word of the balls and the feet, the gospel according to the Footy Fetish. <laughs> this, this has been the Footy Fetish Show, where the fetish is real and the footy is soccer. Thank you, Travis, for being with us today. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs>